and tweak is the actual displacement itself. If we go to the alpha tab, there's all these values here in which we can adjust in order to update the actual displacement. So if we think some of these elements are too sharp, we can change this blur function. So say we put in a blur of 2, and you'll now see it's a little more blurrier than it was before. Now if you want to get these values back to the original one, it's pretty simple. You go to alpha, you just reset the values to what they used to be, and it displays them out updates just like that. Now once you have something that you like, you can now capture this with grab dock. To do that, you just go to texture, and you hit the grab dock button. It will take a snapshot of your document and store it into a texture map that you can then export out to final models, other programs, uh, whatever you like. Also remember that when doing GrabDoc, that you can render the actual map caps too. To render, just go to render and hit best, and you'll see the map cap will start to render. Now oftentimes a lot of the details that map caps have won't be visible until you click render, so it's oftentimes a good practice to do both versions, the one not rendered and the one with best render, and then uh, take the one you like best. Now after this is done, you just grab doc and you're good to go. In this section, I'm going to quickly show you another way in which you can edit this actual texture map that's applied to this plane, and how you can use ZBrush to achieve a layering system similar to what Photoshop has for the different map caps. To start off with, we have our plane 3D object loaded, our diffuse texture is turned on, displacement is on, and we have the intensity set to 30 in the displacement menu. With this set to 30, we're getting this value, which is pretty good. We can check to see if that's what we want. And I think 30 is good. We're going to now take this to half of whatever it is. So if it's 30, we're going to take it to 15. And now we're going to go to the geometry tab of this actual plane 3D, and we're going to subdivide it to five or six times. So we're going to do this to six. So now we have this plane 3D, polymesh plane 3D object subdivided to six, and we have the intensity set to 15. So we're going to first hit mode, and we're going to hit the apply displacement. And what this will do is it's going to bake the displacement map into this plane 3D object. So now we can turn off the displacement and the diffuse, and you'll see that it is now rendered onto a plane. From here, we now have a tangible piece of ZBrush geometry. So we can actually come in and smooth out certain areas. So say if we didn't like these little wrinkles that were happening here, we can just hold shift and smooth them out and actually update our map. Some of these areas would have to clean up a little bit more, but we can now you know, come in and carve and fix some of these areas that were giving us possibly some problems in the other map we had. With this like this, we can now take it to a few steps further, and we will actually load the diffuse texture back in. And we're going to go to the texture menu, turn on colorize, and we're going to bake this texture into the plane 3D. So by hitting texture color, we now have lost our connection with the diffuse, but it's now on the actual plane object. From here, we can now come in and actually paint different stuff on this actual model, kind of like you would in Photoshop. And you can see it's only updating the, the RGB channel because that's all I have selected. And so this will give you some different details to say, like, you didn't like how this was like a darkened area here, you can now brighten this up and have a little more control over what's going to get generated for your final map. After you have this, say you want to apply, you know, the toy plastic element to it. Say you wanted this with toy plastic, but then you want the other areas with the loading 3. Well, in Photoshop, you can take it in and just, you know, make the two layers and subtract each other elements. We'll say if you don't have Photoshop, ZBrush can also do this for you. To do this, first we're going to make sure we have MRGB turned on, or actually just M turned on up here. We're going to go to Color, and we're going to go to Fill Object. And what this is going to do, it's going to fill the plane with the loading 3 material. So now you can see this is now loading 3. So if we come over here and we change this, you will not see it update into anything else because loading 3 is baked into this actual map. So now we can go to this material here, pick another material, say like this toy plastic, and now we can actually paint the actual map cap onto the surface of this geometry, which is giving us the same effect that we would have got 
out of a program like Photoshop. And so we can come through and actually paint the areas in that we want to be gooey or different elements. And it's just pretty nice. You can actually see it update on the fly. Since this is baked in, since the displacement is now actually baked in this map, you can't adjust the intensity at this point. So you would have to redo the process. But this gives you a nice little effect that you can actually come in and create a two or three matcap you know, object without having to have another program. So here's DJN3. Inner truth being a fly. And once it's like this, you strictly you can render it out, grab doc, and then save or export the uh, map back out.